to be a lot nicer individuals than the folks that you find hanging out at the bars. Yeah, uh, there hasn't been one recorded death uh, from the use of hemp, except uh, in the West when they used to lynch people with hemp ropes. Uh, there was quite a few deaths caused by that. And uh, there was one man that, uh, <laughs> that gravity was the primary cause. <laughs> uh, there was one person who did die of overdose, but that overdose came in the form of a 40 pound bale dropping on him and hitting him in the head. So, you know, overdose by weight, yeah. Um, I was involved in a Navy study in the 1970s, and we concluded that for a person to overdose and die smoking hemp, you'd have to smoke over 2,000 joints in one sitting. Um, I don't know anybody that can smoke that hard, and if they did, they'd probably have several McDonald's around them nearby. <laughs> uh, uh, industrial hemp would give us the opportunity to not only uh, open the door for more shopkeepers, but it would start demystifying the plant and it would make the medical aspects of it more pronounced because it would cause people to become more interested in what else this plant can do. Because it's not only rope, it's not only fine fabrics, it's not only paper, it's you know, not only lacquer and paint and you know, a lubricating oil and a biofuel that comes from this. But there are tremendous medical benefits, and I believe Jay's going to speak to that. Um, but what needs to be done, and the only way it's going to get done, is not like ABC's after school special showing us how a bill got turned into a law. That's bullshit. Um, it takes us getting on the phone, calling our local people, and asking them why they're not supporting it. Mm -hmm. uh, and be ready with enough counter information that's true. Because that's what we have as an argument, is what's here. We don't need to go through all the histrionics that they did in the past of creating an artificial fear about marijuana. Uh, we have the truth. And the truth is, is that it's an incredibly safe product that makes nearly 2,000 other products that people use. And we wind up putting ourselves into a better situation. Where President Obama said he didn't believe legalizing hemp would help us get out of our economic situation. I think he must have been smoking some of it. Because <laughs> 70, <laughs> yeah, you're right, you know, 70 billion dollars a year over a 10 year period is almost a trillion dollars and that would almost pay back China for helping us out with their back. Um, but Moreover, that $70 billion a year would pay for the health care that everybody in this country needs. It would pay for that public option. And to my own personal way of thinking, because the federal government sets the pollution standards and allows for us to be poisoned for uh, profit, then they owe us health care. Not that we have to go out and buy it. They absolutely owe it to us as American citizens because they're allowing industry to poison us. And hemp that is used to create paper and charcoal, we get two fantastic benefits from that. One, the Fox River is not going to stink so bad anymore because if you're making paper with hemp, you've got 80% less chemicals going into the waterways. If you use the charcoal made from hemp, you get 70% less stack emissions. So Neon Menashe is going to smell a whole lot nicer when you don't throw it than it does. Now, you know, then. When you're talking about cleaning the waterways, you're talking about creating jobs, we're talking about giving people better health. Those are the very same legs that Obama built his platform on. And for <clears throat> excuse me, them to not allow us to be able to utilize hemp as an industrial agent and as a healing agent is, in my mind, counterproductive to what the president and uh, the First Lady have said is their mission, which is to provide more jobs, jobs that are green jobs, no pun intended, but uh, <laughs> you would be getting you know, less stack emissions, less chemical emissions by making paper out of them. You know, clothing made from hemp would require less uh, preparation also. You create more jobs, you create better health for the people, you know, and especially childhood obesity. If you've got children that are taking hemp oil tablets, or, or even drinking the hemp oil, they're going to naturally lose weight and they're going to be doing it in a healthy way so that you know, they're not starving themselves to death. Um, 
and we're going to be providing for the environment. You know, and as long as we're taking care of those three things, the rest of everything that they want to get done uh, can happen. You know, and the best way to do that is for all of us to get involved, get on these legislators, call them up, talk to them on the phone, and when they start giving you a lot of static, it's perfectly fine to remind them that they hold an elected office. And if they're not willing to serve the will of the people, that we can help them by increasing their body count for the unemployment line. Uh, and that's just what we ought to do. You know, we need to get together with individuals that are willing to make the right things happen so that the country moves ahead, so that people move ahead, so that the guy who has 40 acres and a mule can actually have a living and so that you know there will be more storefronts opening up so that people can have a business. So that somebody wants to sell clothes can sell clothes. And somebody wants to make greeting cards uh, with them paper has a greeting card business. We want to be able to give the widest possible application that can be, and that would be through the use of cannabis hemp in an industrial sense. Because of the amount of products that come from it, because of the benefits that it can give you know, our environment, uh, the people that would be using uh, the meal products that come from it and the jobs that it would create. Uh, this is something I think that as a people we need to get our country to do again. Um, back when we were fighting the revolution, before the revolution, uh, a draft of the Declaration of Independence was printed and handed out to everybody that supported that cause. That paper was hemp paper. Uh, not too long ago on Antiques Roadshow, a gentleman found a copy of this behind an old picture that he bought. The picture, well, it wasn't worth beans because it wasn't made by anybody special, but the hemp paper Declaration of Independence was worth $20,000. Now, now, I'm not saying everybody's paper that's made from hemp is going to be worth twenty grand, but um, it's going to be a kind of paper that lasts a long time, that a book that's over 200 years old is just as easily readable today as it would be then. Uh, that I know for a fact because I was presented with a book that was printed in 1860 on hemp paper. And it's beautiful. The print is fine on it. The, the, the paper is naturally tan, so uh, it didn't really yellow, that I can tell. But uh, the book itself was in fantastic shape. You know? And the same thing can be true with anything that we do today with hemp. And the, the real impetus is for all of us you know, to talk to all of our friends, get as much truth as we can from all the documentation that we have available, make sure that everybody knows it, because the one thing that can never really be beat down <coughs> is the truth. You can hide it, you can mislead it, but when everybody's armed with the truth, then change happens. And the best way to get that change is by all of us getting involved, calling our legislator. I've made myself such a pain in the ass to the legislature. All they need is to hear my name, and it's, oh, God, it's Jeff. <laughs> but that's a good thing, you know, uh, because they know when they see me that I will honestly tell them, yeah, I use it, you know, I support it, yeah, I don't hide from that fact. And because I don't hide from that fact, uh, that creates respect for my position. You know, and that's one thing we have to do. You know, we have uh, law enforcement officials that uh, like to see more than just him legalized because the war on drugs is stupid and you know I agree with that from day one. Uh, uh, the people that want to see medical hemp out there, I agree with them totally you know, because there is fantastic medical benefits from that. Um, if you can get into a library that maintains an old enough selection of books, uh, look up a thing that's called the Pharmacopoeia, which is what uh, uh, it's a large book that contained every drug that was ever made. Uh, by any particular company. And Eli Lilly had over 21 different hemp products that was made. Um, nowadays they would say, no, we never did that. But you pull out one of these old books and show it to them, and they'll say, oh, yeah, we did. Uh, uh, once again, Antiques Roadshow had a pharmacist kit. And in the pharmacist kit, there was uh, two cans. Uh, one was of uh, hashish extract, and the other one was uh, marijuana. <laughs> powders and uh, both of them naturally were empty. <laughs> uh, it proved, uh, the date on it was 1908, and it proved that Eli Lilly at that time 
you know, was engaged.